initially out of that was Fortnite, but I didn't want to play Fortnite. Like, I'm an adult. I don't want to play Fortnite, right? Like, that's what I was thinking at the time. Uh, so when Warzone came along, I'm like, okay, this is going to be great, right? And then Apex came along, and I'm like, okay, well, this is going to do better than what Warzone is doing. It's in the Apex universe. I love that universe. It's made by the same team that made one of my favorite games, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Hello and welcome to level 110 of the Thoughts of Players podcast, the gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy, here with my compadre, David. What up? How are you doing this fine evening? I'm doing all right. Good. How about you? Doing all right. Doing okay. Not doing too not doing too terrible, you know? Uh Good. things seem to be fine. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens. We hope you're doing out well out there. We are we're glad you're joining us for the pod. Once I I've said again, I said before, I'll say again, level 110. That's right. Firmly into the triple digits here. Double triple digit. Yeah, 100 percent Um, yeah, we got a couple of really cool, interesting topics, I think that we're going to hop into for this level. But before we get into that, I want I, I want us to discuss the things that I actually love hearing. I, I Even though I think I know, I never truly know. And that is the games that we are playing. Um, David, I can offer up mine first, but if you wanted to offer sure. up yours. All right, all right. I will offer up mine. I've been playing one game. I've found oh. a little bit of time. To play, but I am super jazzed about playing it. I played it for maybe about 20, 30 minutes, and I am just, I cannot wait to jump back into it and spend a little bit more time. May try to sink some hours into it tonight. You know, in level 106, we talked about uh, Hellblade 2, but we also talked about, hey, what are some recent EA games that we actually enjoy? And guess what? I found another one. Really? That's right. I have been able to play a round, a a front nine session of EA's PGA Tour 24. (laughs) Now, people may, people probably don't know this, but I am actually really into golf video games, okay? I used to play the Tiger Woods PGA Tour games back in the day. Always enjoyed them, right? I mean, look, it's you know, it was great that we had Tiger out there, you know, now even more so he's not out there as much. So I get to go in here in EA's PGA Tour uh, 2024, and I get to go out there and I get to make, in many instances, the only black guy out there playing golf. And I get to go out there and I get to swing that ball and I and I and, and I get to put it on the green, put it on the fairway, and then put it on the green. And when I put it in for a birdie, when I put it in for eagle, know that every time I am doing it, I am yelling Wakanda. Okay, <laughs> that is what that is that is what's happening. That is what is going on. Uh, I love those games, man. They're like there's nuance to them. They're they're hard, but you can set it up in a way where it's not too hard. It's not like completely aggravating. The better you get at it, I mean, you just when you're when you're putting a ball from and I'm this is just golf talk. We're, we're just chopping it up about golf now. When you no. hit when you're hitting the putt, let's say 20, 25 plus mm-hmm. feet away, you know what I'm saying? It's it's hard. But when you nail it and it freaking goes in there, and then the British announcer guy, because it's gotta be British, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, oh, from 25 feet away, just a marvelous putt, a little bit of Dutch English, or whatever the heck they say. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's just a fantastic feeling. So I've, I've been playing that. I have, I set up my character. I did, again, some, some practice sessions, but I'm going to start the career mode so I can actually level up my character, get new gear, get better skills. I'm trying to be able to drive the ball three four hundred yards wherever it is just go just go nuts with it right um so yeah that's that's what i've been playing a little bit and i want to jump super into it i'm i'm trying i'm going to be trying to balance that with expeditions rome because i want to keep my momentum going in that and i feel like i'll be able to do it because there are such different games that i'll be able to balance um but as i say this i also have to finish buying my games that are on Steam sale. 
So I don't know if that's going to disrupt this harmony I'm trying to strike because <laughs> I've mentioned before Project Hospital. It's on mm-hmm. sale. It's like 50% mm-hmm. off. There's a couple of other games. Um, Starship Troopers Terran Command is also on sale. I'd love to. This is an RTS based in the Starship Troopers universe. It's a great game, it looks like. Uh, by all accords, sounds like it's great. Uh, but I'm going to make sure I try to keep that focus there. But that's what I've been playing. PGA Tour 2024. Let's go. Nice. Let's hit let, Let's hit these bombs on the fairway. What, what about you? What have you been playing? Well, I do want to hop in. I used to play the Tiger Woods one, too. Yeah? One of my, my exes, their dad bought a PlayStation just to play the, the games. So when we weren't doing nothing and just chilling at our house, I would just play the golf games. Yeah. They, were, they, were, they weren't bad. But uh, what I've been playing now, which, you know, I, I got my computer fixed, so I don't have to deal with these little leg spikes anymore. I've yeah. been a little more on Apex and more on Overwatch. I don't, I just dropped DVD. I just haven't felt the want to play it, it dropped for it some again. reason. Yeah, I don't know why. Like, I, I was enjoying <laughs> it, but I'm just like, mm, not today, every single day. Huh. So you're so you're just back to the the two. The two. You're back to the two. And yeah, so far, yeah. so far, Activision Blizzard hasn't been doing any foolish stuff with you. They've just left you alone. So far. Okay. We'll see how we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I think they're too busy making crazy uh updates to the game. Yeah. Yeah, they just buffed uh all the tanks and a lot of people aren't happy about it. Oh, you know, yeah. The not take players. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, that's that's what I've been playing. Is that the type of game where just you know more and just more knowledge about it? Is that the type of game where people typically default to the tank type heroes characters? Or um, I think people usually go toward the DPS roles. Okay. Because because like uh. There's roll queue, which it's a tank, two DPS, two healers, and what you queue for is what you get. And mm-hmm. then there's open queue, where everybody just picks what they want, and hopefully you have decent people on your team that kind of pick and choose what you need to be on your team. Yeah. And quite quite often on open queue, there's two people that are just immediately like pick DPS. Mm. So and it also has the most characters by a wide margin. Yeah, I think that that needs to be changed. But I think it's harder to make tank and healing roles without kind of overlapping characters. Right. Would you say that um, just based upon your experience or maybe what you're saying, new p- new players that hop into Overwatch, do they tend to um, lean towards tanks? Because typically that's what I see, and that's like what the kind of the the mode of advice or the or the typical advice is for people that are jumping into RPGs. If you're jumping into something like a Dragon Age or, you know, Kingdom of Amalur or anything else that maybe you default to the more kind of straightforward, milly tanky kind of base characters because typically the games are designed with that kind that kind of character being more of the focus. Right. Um rather than going for like a high DPS rogue that's a lot more a lot less defense, but they're like DPS and 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 damage output is crazy or something like a mage or something like that. So, does it seem like people kind of lent more towards that when they're first getting into it that they're more tanks? That's a good question. I'm not too entirely sure, but yeah. I I know in even in like in quick play, there's quite a variety. Like you know, because you have to be a certain level to play comp, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, I I I think it might be kind of a little of everything. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. That's a good question. I can. I'm gonna look into that. Yeah, I remember it. It kind of reminds me of like um, like uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, for instance. Like, whenever I play those games, I mostly start out as like just a regular melee kind of tanky, not even doing like a dual wield, like a dual blade thing. Just more so sword and shield type of person. Um, but I remember I did after my I usually will do that and then I'll do an assassin playthrough and then I'll do a mage playthrough. 
Um, and the fun that I had a lot with the mage playthrough in that game is there's I, you, there's a lot of different ways that magic can actually help in regards to like damage and also mostly just like buff and supporting. Like you can just heal yourself and all those different types of things too. But also like a part of a part of those games is alchemy. Where, you know, you combine ingredients to create potions and different things like that. And it was really right. cool that my mage was able to do that. So I would just go around picking mushrooms and thistle and whatever else there is out there in the world, creating potions and then selling them. Um, which is cool because you can actually make, in that game, you can make a lot of money. And I was able to, like, buy a, like, before when I had my melee character, I had to do so many missions and so many quests to be able to buy, like, the cheapest house in town. Right. Um, but then when I was my mage, I just went around making potions for like a couple hours and then I could afford that house. And I'm like, this is how you do it. And then also, um, just like an added thing, like, you know, in the Elder Scrolls game, they have something called moon sugar, which is essentially a drug, like it's illegal, an illegal substance in those games. So that's always cool. Cause it's like, oh, they've got moon sugar. What are they going to do with that moon sugar? So I'm freaking, I'm, I'm, I'm RPing as this like old white haired mage. But I'm like trying to become the biggest drug dealer in Cyril Deal. It was <laughs> ridiculous. Um, but yeah, playing different. I've always wondered, like, I know the little bit that I've played Overwatch, I always opted for more of a tanky type of person. That's, that's just kind of what felt natural. Though at, before I stopped playing, I ended up, and I can't remember his name, but you're going to probably know who I'm talking about. I ended up playing the guy with the, um, with the revolvers and the hat. Do you know who I'm Agreed. talking about? Or well, his name's Cassidy now. Oh yeah, yeah. They changed. Oh, they changed it. Yeah. So, Cassidy, his name was the same name as one of the people who worked there, and he had not so good allegations against him. Beach. So they just went and changed his name. Yeah. Cassidy, like you see, you said it was Cassidy. It's Cassidy now. Yeah. Cassidy, like Butch Cassidy, I'm guessing. Uh, I I don't know actually. I only know I only know just Cassidy. Cause he's like a cowboyish thing, he's right? He's a cowboy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, but yeah, that's who I used to play then was Cassidy. And when I started playing, that's not so much of a tank. That's more. It feels like more sort of a finesse type of character. Yeah, it's uh, definitely I, like mid range DPS yeah. right there. But I remember playing. I'm like, oh, this is different. And then I just like the damage output and the range of motion and the feel. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna play this. I'm not going to be the huge hulking guy with the big shield now. I'm going to be this guy, you know? Right. Yeah. That was always fun. How, uh, Sometimes when you're not raging. I mean, overall, it j just kind of put a button on this before we go over to our other topics. Just a little bit more curiosity about Overwatch because Overwatch has had a time. It's It's been having a little bit of a time. Um, Are you getting back into it before your hater finds you again? Do you feel like it's it's settling in to maybe being something nice, or are you still feeling like something like Marvel's Rivals or these other games that are kind of coming out are still going to be able to take its lunch if, if they launch in a way that's like respectable and they're they're able to like you know weather technical issues and different stuff like that? Yeah, if they if they launch with the right mindset, I feel like they can take it over. There's yeah. most of the community of Overwatch is kind of fed up with it. Mm -hmm. Some people are playing it just because that's just what they've played, which is exactly me. Yeah. And a lot of people are just done with them trying to buff this character, but debuff this character, buff this character, and nothing's ever really feeling good to them. There's, yeah. yeah, there's just, I mean, I guess it can go with any game, but there's a lot of complaints. Okay. So if like, Rivals launch as well, it, it could take over. Yeah. I Because re I remember feeling that way about PUBG, where I'm like, I I really enjoy this format, this style of game. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for a better game to come along and do it right. Right? Um, And it looked like that was going to be Call of Duty Warframe. Or not Warframe, but Warzone. It looked like it was going to be Call of Duty Warzone that did it right. Um, But then COD is going to COD. And so I did end up working out 100%. Uh, I think probably the one that did it the best um, initially out of that was Fortnite. But I didn't want to play Fortnite. Like, I'm an adult. I don't want to play Fortnite, right? Like, that's what I was thinking at the time. Uh, so when Warzone came along, I'm like, okay, this is going to be great, right? And then Apex came along, 
And I'm like, okay, well, this is going to do better than what Warzone is doing. It's in the Apex universe. I love that universe. It's made by the same team that made one of my favorite games, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. So I think when, when all the dust settled with that, Apex kind of ended up taking over for that for a while. But, heck, I remember when Warzone first came out, I was happy with that because I'm like, finally, a competent shooter. It doesn't, when I'm running away from someone or someone is running towards me, they don't lag out. You can't have a game that has something like, uh, you know, like like bullet dropping and like different stuff like that and ballistics, and you're lagging all the time. Right. It doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. and plus, the game just got just full of cheaters, and that's like kind of pervaded a lot of these games. But uh, right. Yeah, I, I remember loving it, putting tons of hours into a game and be like, I can't wait till something better comes along. And eats at lunch, and, and I don't yep. have to play this anymore. And that's what happened. So maybe that might end up happening. In Overwatch, I think Overwatch might be too big for that to completely happen. But yeah, I don't think it's gonna just like die. But I feel like it could really slow down. Right to a point where Activision Blizzard has to really like slow down, take a beat, and figure out what they're gonna do to make the game work. Right. Yeah. Well. Enough of that uh, sidebar on Overwatch. Let's jump into some topics. Huh? We got I two guess. topics. We got two topics. Now, uh, which do you want to offer your topic first, or should I go with mine? Sure, we can do mine. Okay. All right. So, for my topic, we're going to talk about sales of video games and how they can affect sequels and prequels coming out. Right? So, there's something I shared with you previously was a tweet about how well Hellblade 2 did. Mm-hmm. Now, it ranked 37th overall for May in the U.S. and over in 21st on Xbox. So, I, I mean, I think that's pretty good. You know, quite a few games came out in May and hitting top 50. I think I think that's great. Was this now, just for a quick question? Was this yeah, for yeah. new? Is this new releases or was this games like overall? It says physical and digital for sharing and game dollar sales. It doesn't say if it was just new or not. So it's probably it just says game. May. Okay, cool. So my question is, what do you think? people look for as the corporation or as the company when they're like, all right, this did however decent we can go make another one. Like Hellblade, you know, did 37 and 21. I I think that'd be like, great. Like, okay, let's, let's get another one going. But like, if it was 50th, you know, would it be like, you know what? That wasn't great. Let's, let's not make any more of those. Mm-hmm. You know, like where do you where do you think these people draw the line? Yeah, I think it's. I mean, obviously, there's the whole thing of like what is the cause versus what the profit is, but there's also kind of like, does it align more with expectations? Because I feel like there's also been games in the past that technically made money, but they were canceled. So one game I'm I'm thinking of, but I'm not sure on this. Someone might have to uh, correct me on that is uh days gone by by playstation that game came out uh, a lot of people wanted a sequel for my understanding or at least what i'm assuming based on what i'm reading but i'm not sure and kind of like comments from the developer the creator of it who seems to really have a lot of bitterness about the game not getting more love uh was that it seemed like the game made money but they decided not to make a sequel or go along with it as a franchise um so I guess it would really depend on what Xbox is thinking for something like Hellblade 2. The numbers you provided is interesting because it being in that top, you said like it's was it 37th, did you say? 37th overall, yeah. 37th overall to me that's not terrible. But then you said it was 21st on Xbox. Yeah. That's a little concerning to me. Um because that's one of Xbox's big exclusive games. I would think that it would probably be a top 20 game. Mm-hmm. If you know what I'm saying, like it would, it would seem that way, but then also there weren't, there wasn't a lot of marketing behind it either. 
Um, and so I mean, it just depends maybe on what Xbox is thinking. Like, is this a game where we're expecting to see four, five, six million copies sold? Or is this a game where we're looking at it and we're saying this is one of our our boutique interesting experience games and if we are able to hit two million copies sold we're happy with that you know what i'm saying if we're kind of able to hit along there is, is that what they're kind of thinking i would have to think a game like hellblade could probably move a couple million copies so um yeah i think so too so it's like are they happy with it right whatever those those um those grades are for hellblade if we're looking at 37 and 21 that may work for hellblade does that work for Halo? Probably not. Does that work for making... Does that work for Gears? Probably not, right? Um so I think I think it really just depends on what the expectations of the publisher and then whatever the developer what their bottom line what all that looks like and stuff like that. So it's and then sometimes if the game is interesting enough, it merits a sequel. If it does something interesting, I think Hellblade pushes a lot of um, innovations in regards to graphics and storytelling. Right. I think it's I think it's cutting edge on that, and that may be a feather in Xbox's cap that that says we're willing to push and and put out another sequel because of that, because it does these things that we really value and appreciate and want to push forward. Um, so it just really depends on what the game, what the intent of the game is, and what their expectations for it are. It makes sense, you know? Yeah, you bring up some good points. And uh, how I was also thinking about how important is it to the companies and corporations of how well it does the first month for how well it does the first year. You know, because a, uh, a lot of people ain't got money. So mm -hmm. they're, they're, being, they're being very protective of what games they're buying. Right. So... Fortunately, you know, games like Hellblade was on uh, the Xbox Gold, mm -hmm. so you could just play it automatically, but not every game is. And right. so, it, yeah, it did 21st overall on Xbox, but maybe it stays 21st, you know, give or take a couple ranks throughout the entire year. So mm -hmm. that's, I think that's more impressive. Yeah. You know, because... It's here and now it's gone, but people are still going through it, maybe replaying it or new people playing it, and it keeps it on the radar. But yeah, so like, you know, of course, there's a Call of Duty coming out. What else yeah. is new? And, you know, if if that doesn't hit top top 20, that's obviously not going to be good at all because that's all it's been doing the previous years. I don't understand. Yeah. As an original yeah. Call of Duty player, I <laughs> it's crazy yeah. they're still making them. But I, I see what you say about the expectations of depending on what kind of game and what game it is and stuff like that. Yeah. So, and what else did I, I want to say? I wanted to say something. Well, it's, it's kind of like, because, I mean, one of the things we're talking about, we're going to talk about too, is, is the idea, because you mentioned, like, the sales on the Xbox. Now, was that sales on just Xbox consoles, or was that also PC? I missed that one. Uh, I think it was overall for, like, both. Okay, okay. It didn't, it didn't, oh, okay, it says 21st on the Xbox series. Ah, okay, cool. That's cool. Okay, because one of the things I was going to say, too, is that Xbox kind of has this weird space of where a lot of their stuff has to be, like, PC- like, like their first party stuff has to be PC compliant, where PlayStation and Nintendo's doesn't, right? PlayStation right. can release a game and then put it on PC two or three years later, and they get a whole nother boost of revenue. I'm trying to think of, I can probably look up the numbers right here in regards to um, PlayStation releasing Ghost of Tsushima on, uh, on PC. Uh, let's see, PC sales... Uh, because it pushes, you know, eight something, eight million something copies, right? Uh, right? Let's see here. They have a report that's saying that Ghost of Tsushima at one point broke a record on Steam for having seventy-seven thousand concurrent players. So wow. the the idea is that 
you know, it probably sold more than 77,000 copies. But right. the idea is that most of those people aren't PlayStation people who are now deciding to play the game on PC. The idea is that these are people that never bought the game before. Right. And it's a whole new introduction. So you kind of mentioned like sale thing where maybe it's something like there's a sale or maybe there's access and Xbox is playing maybe to do this by making some of their games multi-plat is that, okay, now I'm releasing Hellblade 2 on PlayStation and Nintendo. Here's another two, three million people that didn't buy this before that bought it now. Right. right. And then you're talking about a niche game that instead of having two million copies sold, maybe has five or six million copies sold. Obviously, then you're going to come up, you're going to follow up with a with a sequel. I guess it's kind of gauging that that bare minimum from the initial standpoint of what those initial sales are going to be and what the projecting the sales are going to be for the first twelve to eighteen months. I'm guessing typically with, with products like a video game. I'm assuming because, like you said, you'll have sales intermittent here or there. You knock ten percent off here, twenty percent off here. I'm assuming that the holiday season is another cycle they kind of keep in mind regardless of what they're calculating or projecting sales to be so you know yeah i didn't even think of that business wise yeah christmas probably really boosts up a lot of stuff yeah i mean i would i would say that even though it's a a beautiful game i you've got to be i don't know who you are if you're buying hellblade for someone for christmas like you're not one of them to have a very jolly Christmas, okay? They they might be they might be excited to get the game, but they're not going to be excited to have that experience. They're going to be like, man, this is kind of a downer, you know. But uh, right, if I, it, it's something could happen. And then I was that's what I was I was thinking. So like maybe depending on what game it is, they're looking for a percentage for some of them, and then some of them they're looking for a just. A, a number mm-hmm. you know like hellblade you know if if they make a 30 percent profit that's good to them you know they'll think about making another one but like you know call of duty it's a big one like if that doesn't bring them in you know 30 billion dollars they they might not make another one right it may be even so specifically talking to like hellblade it may be a thing where you're right it may be a percentage increase because xbox didn't didn't own ninja theory when they made the first hellblade right they made it on their own and i think they sold it for 40 dollars. this is the one that's under it's the first one under xbox and they're selling it for 50 dollars. they may be looking at like what is your overall player numbers from the first one versus this one because maybe it's that it didn't make as big of a profit that we wanted to but your player base increased by 20 27 percent that's let that let us know is that the interest in the player base for this title is growing and it's worth investing in because we'll see it reap later on down the line you know that might be yeah, something else exactly yeah that's uh, so many variables you know it's a lot and so, i just wish it was this is a good game so sequel it is or this was a bad game it's dead right I mean, yeah, you know, um, it just really depends. But sometimes you get to that end, right? I talked about Fable. Um, you know, they probably should have, there probably shouldn't be a Fable 3, but there is. And, uh, you know, some games that they just made one-offs that were great and there's no sequels to follow, you're kind of like, you know, what happened, you know? Right. Um, yeah, so... I mean, ideally, people, if there were great games, people would buy and play the great games and they would get the sequels. And bad games, people just wouldn't play or buy them. And then they would either end or they would be forced to be better. But if that happened, we wouldn't have Madden. So, uh, <laughs> gamers just don't do that. Uh, very true. It's very yeah. true. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Well, what, do you, what do you got for your topic? Moving on to my topic is uh, just kind of having a discussion. I'm not really sure if we'll land at an end point with it. But, um, you know, here we like to focus on games. Talk about games. That is, this is true. You know, um, that's going to mostly still be the point. But in this topic, what I've noticed is, is that, you know, past few years, and I guess that we're participants to this to some extent, there's been a lot gaming influencers and gaming personalities mm-hmm. have begun to dominate the sphere of gaming almost as much, if not more than games themselves. So um, the thing that has kind of had me thinking about this is there's this, uh, the whole issue in regards to a popular streamer named Dr. Disrespect. Who I used to watch a long time ago when he, he was still on Twitch 
uh, got kicked off Twitch mysteriously. No one really knew. There were some uh, things that came out recently about there being allegations of inappropriate behavior uh, with with various persons. Um, I think he's taking a break. He denied it and then taking a break and different stuff like that. And discussion about him has kind of dominated a lot of the gaming news and gaming discussion. Mm-hmm. I think to the to the detriment of possibly other smaller games that could be getting some talking points from other personalities or media outlets that are choosing to cover a personality over covering a game, right? Um, right. That's not to say that the story doesn't deserve any attention, but I feel like in gaming uh, that the games, the actual these are these expressions, these artistic expressions deserve a little bit more uh, spotlight than the people who may play them, you know, for entertainment or whatever. Yeah. And it's, it seemed like that's been a growing trend that more and more, you know, we have there's stories. If you're going on YouTube and you're looking up gaming news and stuff like that, you'll see some stuff about the news, stuff about companies. You'll more likely see an article bashing city skylines to and paradox interactive and they deserve it. But you'll also see stories about <laughs> Dr. Disrespect. And you'll see, you know, about other streamers, maybe like SS Sniper and 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 Pokimane and these other personalities. And again, it's not a matter of like these are specific personalities that I or anyone has issues with. It's just re- in regards to like these personalities begin to dominate the conversation of gaming. Um, and I am just kind of wondering aloud if we're already down a path that is going to end up being uh, bad for us as as people who enjoy playing video games, uh, as people kind of enjoy the products that these developers and these creatives are able to create and they put their heart and soul into, is that um, instead of us talking about enjoying a game, we're talking about the fact that someone who may have got really popular playing that game uh, decided to do an RL, R- IRL stream and they assaulted a homeless person, right? I'm just saying that's like a situation that occurs. <laughs> and then we aren't talking about the game anymore. The game itself right. is associated with something it shouldn't be associated with. And it just puts everything in a different perspective. Um, are we headed down a good path with that type of thing, right? Um, have we allowed the have we allowed the the things to get out of hand, essentially? You know? Uh, it's something that I wonder about. I think about certain times. Where, where the gaming community seem to at large bond to band together. Of course, what, what comes to mind is uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, when everyone said no to these loot boxes, they suck, go away. And, um, you know, EA had to change route. Um, I'm just wondering if, if this is something that we all need to be more aware of and be more diligent uh, in about making sure that, by and large, the conversation of gaming stays on games. And rather than giving so much of a spotlight to these individuals, we spotlight the people who are actually being the creatives and creating these these products that some of us go on to love that actually shapes who we are as people years down the line. You know? Right. Yeah. So I I have two points at least. I might mm-hmm. come up with some more as I'm talking and man, rumbling. Rambling. Not rumbling. So my first point is the you know the streamers and stuff like that there's a lot of people like in the apex and overwatch community they're saying that the devs are listening to the wrong people and it's the people that are doing it as a job the streamers you know like they they try and complain you know and since they have thousands and thousands of followings like all they you know they must be saying something right because all these people are watching them and agree with them and yada 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 (laughs) when just because you play it all day doesn't necessarily mean you know what needs to happen. Right. Like, you know, not to the, the dog on myself. I know I'm a little bit above average, but like I'm plat slash diamond in pretty much any competitive game I play. And yeah, there's things that I would, you know, want to like change or adjust, but like, I, I don't know everything. Obviously I, I have some work I need to do. So all these people saying the same stuff, you know, it might not be what you think it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And then two, the problem with 
all the the bigger streamers and stuff like that is it's turning into Hollywood essentially now like you know it was it was all about the movies and how well they did and stuff like that but now you know we have stuff like TMZ and you know stuff like that just following the celebrities everything they do whatever they they, they don't do like Mm-hmm. Sure, we all have our favorite actors and actresses and stuff like that, but like, I'm in, I'm in it for the movies. You know, yeah. is the movie good? Is the movie bad? I don't care if my favorite actor is in it or not. Yes, you know, if he's in it, I'll look into it. But like, we need to go back into the, like the games. Is the right. game good? Is the game bad? Not hey, this guy plays it, and he, you know, uh, we're used, for example, we use Shroud. Oh, Shroud plays it. Millions of people are watching him play. You know, it it has to be at least a decent game. Mm -hmm. I'm positive there's at least one or two games Shroud absolutely loves and is a total train wreck of a game. Yeah. You know, we we all have those. You you can't not have one. Yeah. You know, there's people out there that, like, uh, what was that one that just came out? Redfall? Yeah. Absolutely trash game. Some people love it. Love it. And love even it. My pers- myself personally, I, you know, love Apex. I won't I won't give it above a seven ever yeah. right now, unless they change a lot of stuff. But then that goes back to I'm um, Platt Diamond. What do I know? Yeah, so that, that, it's oh go ahead, go ahead. No, yeah, that is that is one thing. I've always I've said this, I think, for as long as we've been doing this podcast, that that one of the things that always strikes me is how people aren't aware or aren't aren't real, aren't truthful with themselves in regards to, hey, there's you're gonna love bad games. There's some games that you're gonna love that are I know this for myself. There's tons of games that I absolutely adore that are not good. But for whatever reason, they scratch an itch a certain way that I absolutely love. And that's why I play those games, right? Um right. I kind of like what you were saying before, where it's like you have a developer. I think this is more so especially the case with smaller, mid to smaller developers, where if there are a few high profile, more high profile streamers that play their games, they're more apt to listen to the streamers because the streamers are kind of giving them the juice, essentially. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the, the streamers are really platforming their game. And so when the streamers are like, I don't like this, this needs to change or something like this. They're really they're more so kind of trying to listen to them rather than listen to feedback of everyone and incorporate that with their own intuition and like skills as a game designer. Right. Right. Um, that, yeah, for sure. That's like, that's another way that they kind of like can affect or pollute the artistry of like creating video games, so to speak is Mm -hmm. access. You know, I I was kind of, while you were saying, I was kind of thinking like almost like a gaming oligarchy, like you kind of have these certain clans essentially of gaming streamers that have, that that have that have the ear of these gaming publishers or developers more than just the millions upon millions of people that pay to play their game. While the streamers right. themselves are just they probably got it for free. They probably got a code, and that's just as far as they're invested in money wise, you know. Yeah, and it's easier to listen to fifty people than it is to listen to fifty thousand. Yeah. So, is it an easy way out? And that's 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 debate, right? Um, right, but I also just think about like you have one of those cases, like you mentioned Shroud. Shroud is I don't know. I mean, if, if he was playing PUBG for a while, he was like the PUBG guy. But I think yeah. about like the other other big thing thing that he was part of was Counter Strike. Mm-hmm. Um, if you know Shroud gets into some, you know, gets some allegations thrown at him, there's an association with Counter Strike in that way. Things get a little bit weird. They just get weird, and you have to kind of navigate what's going on there and um the the game it's it's it kind of falls into the background of the discussion and we're kind of more so talking about shroud and whatever he's got going on and the game loses a little bit of that spotlight and maybe it's rightfully deserved maybe that's how it should be but i kind of feel like in a lot of in a lot of case cases the the games and gaming as a whole the games as a whole are losing a little bit more spotlight to these personalities emerging because they have their own drama that kicks up too so like you right. kind of mentioned TMZ. Now we got a whole like TMZ aspect to gaming. And it's not even the people making the game, it's just the people playing, you know? Like Yeah. 
it's 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 a little weird, and, I, and I'm and I'm not sure if we're down we're going down the right path with that. Yeah, I have to say to answer your question, I don't think we're on the right path. Yeah, we're not necessarily like stuck on it, but there's probably going to be a fork in the road soon that we might not be able to get back. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I, I'm I'm curious to see where where this goes, where all this goes, because uh, it's it feels weird. Like you said, it's TMZ and gaming, like it's weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm not really big on watching streamers. Like, I subscribed to one of them for a long time because he put out a lot of YouTube videos and stuff like that. But like, even you know, I don't associate with with him anymore but i you know i still play the game and you know i guess that is what it is yeah i just don't i don't understand why people can't change their opinion on something when something new comes up right yeah that's it's i don't i don't i don't get it yeah it's it's streaming Streamers, I don't really watch any streamers anymore. I used to watch a fair bit of them. I used to watch um I used to watch Total Biscuit when he was around. Um he used to stream on, on Twitch with Dodger and Jesse Cox and um uh and I used to watch a couple other I used to watch Dr. Disrespect. When he was on Twitch, I watched him pretty consistently. Dr. Disrespect and he would do some stuff with Tim the Tatman and he would do some stuff with Trout as well. I used to kind of watch that whole little group. Um I don't really watch streamers that much anymore. Um might catch some clips here and there, but um, I mean, in the interim of that, it's gotten way bigger than it was. I, I was I was watching it early in its in, you know inception, and it's gotten way bigger. So right, uh, yeah, it's just kind of yeah, it's 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 a weird space, and it's interesting to see how it grows. You know, yeah, I agree. Hopefully, hopefully, there's a bit more correction that kind of takes place. Um, I think there's one. There's maybe one streamer that I watch. I don't watch his streams, but I watch his videos. Is uh probably uh Moist Critical. Uh, I think is probably the one that I do watch. Um, yeah, but that was pretty much it for my topic. Okay, I think that's pretty which good. means we are headed towards a final thoughts. Ooh. Final thoughts where we can offer a thought about anything related or unrelated to this podcast episode. So, who would like to give a final thought first? I'll go first. Okay. Okay. So, this weekend as, you know, as of recording, um is Pokémon Go Festival. So, the from 10 to 6 Saturday and Sunday, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. So, I was like, "All right, I want to be prepared for this." So I sat there and went through my 4,600 spaces because I'm always kind of running out of room. So I'd have to delete a few, catch some more, delete a few. So I sat down and I said, I'm going to go through every Pokemon, see if I need them or not. So I went from pretty much full at 4,600 down to 1,800. Oh, okay. I had so much junk that is a yeah. Pokemon storage. That is a lot of space you cleared up, huh? Yeah, I uh, pretty much three thousand spaces. So I'm like, yeah. I hope I'm good for this weekend. Yeah, I would hope you're good for this weekend. I would hope three thousand. I mean, does it seem like it's? I don't know, three thousand. Does that seem like you're cutting? Is that tight for the for this I, weekend out there? I I think it should be fine. I mean, you know, I'm I'll be deleting them as I catch them because I, I think the problem is there is um things you can buy. Like, I have a Pokemon Go Plus Plus. It's this little okay. Pokeball that catches Pokemon and spin stops for you. So, I, you know, look at the stats and either keep or delete the ones I catch, but the ones that are being caught by the Pokeball, I'm not really looking through. So, I think that's how I accumulated so many Pokemon that I didn't need to keep. So... Okay. Okay. Should, should be good. Should be good. Should be good. Wow. That's that's my final thought. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, hey, you're gonna you're gonna have to eventually report out what all the 
with all with all good catchings the weekend brought you. What you know, how you're looking now compared to? Yeah, I they just introduced fusing. Fusers. There's, yeah, there's one Pokemon that can fuse with two other Pokemon, and I I don't know I I don't know. One specific Pokemon that can fuse with two, with with any two Pokemon, or there are two other specific. There's Pokemon? two other specifics that huh. it can fuse with. That's wild. Yeah, I didn't expect fusing in Pokemon. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like fusing. I mean, it's not the same as like crossbreeding or something, is it? I mean, just blatantly, that's kind of, almost kind of what it feels like when you're saying fusing. Um, that you could almost like cross a. I don't know, cross cross a uh, cross a rapid dash with a with a with a with a, with a, right, with a right. <laughs> you know what a what a, what a right. charm so, yeah, thing, it's right? not exactly, it's not it's not like that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I mean, I'm out of the loop. I don't know, so I was just trying to make sure. Right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> cool. Um, my final thought has something we talked about. Uh, well, we talked about Hellblade. Yes. Xbox, right? Yes. Taking some steps, some right steps. Here's a wrong step that Xbox recently made. And I think they announced it. Did they announce it today? They announced it today. Um, and it's Game Pass. Microsoft is increasing Game Pass price. Uh-oh. Game Pass Ultimate. They're increasing it from, uh, I think it's $18.99 now to $19.99. Um. Uh, Oh, actually, no. It's it's usually sixteen ninety nine or seventeen dollars, and it's going up by three dollars to nineteen ninety nine. Okay, um, there used to be a console only version, a console only tier that was like ten ninety nine, where you can get Xbox Game Pass just for your Xbox console. That right. is going away, and it instead being really, it's being uh, instead of that, they are phasing in an Xbox Game Pass standard. Okay, which will go, which will be fourteen ninety nine. Um. So not only is all that crazy that they're increasing prices, it looks like three dollars across the board. I'm not sure if you're. I mean, Dave, I'm not sure if you heard heard about this yet. Um, the thing that's really bad, besides the price raising, is that this standard tier, this standard tier, does not include day one new releases. That's half of the perk. It seems like that was most of the point of Game Pass. So if you have a standard tier, when a vial comes out or Call of Duty Black Ops is coming out or any of that, you don't get it day one. It's I don't under what are they doing? They're they're here's here's what's happening. Here's what I think is happening is they're they're, they're put they're putting on the squeeze now. Xbox Game Pass subscribers. The amounts they've been able to get, they've pretty much gotten as much as they can get as far as memberships. So now, right. so now it's okay. Well, now we got to start squeezing what we got because we can't get no more, right? If we could get another four, five, seven, ten million, ten million subscribers, then maybe we don't do this. But since it seems like we've gotten, we're near the end of uh, how much we can get, we got to start squeezing. So we're going to start squeezing three hundred. And so what we want you to do is you can get the standard tier. For 15 bucks, but wouldn't you rather be able to have day one for just five dollars more? This feels this does not feel like Xbox of the past few years. This yeah. feels like Sony, is They're what it feels digging like. Digging their claws in. This is this something point. because you know, Sony had their whole thing that they did with their crazy membership stuff. Mm -hmm. This feels like something that Sony would do. Sony has done, but it's Xbox doing it. I think it. that's I think that's why Sony did it. And they didn't see any repercussions, really. They might have seen a little tick, right. but they're like, oh, oh, that's fine. I, I love Sony. And they just stick right. with it. So I just looked What's... it up. There's around yeah. 34 million subscribers to Game Pass. Mm -hmm. Okay? So just raising it $1 is 34 million a month. More. And they want to raise it by 10 because you said it was like mm -hmm. 10 bucks, right? And now it's going to be 20. Well, the the the, the ultimate ultimate, the ultimate was like the ultimate was 17 and now it's going to be 20. 
Right. But he, a lot um, of these people are going to go from 10 to 20 because they want the day one releases. Prob- that's that's what I'm thinking. They're going to either pay, they either go from paying 10.99 to 14.99 and get less because even at the 10.99 console tier, you still got day one releases, right? So yep. you're either going to go you're either going to pay $3 more and get less or you're going to pay like you said $10 more to keep what you had. Yeah. So yeah. it's 340 million a month if yeah. they all did that. Yeah. Why? I I I always say I understand business. Okay, I that's what I went to college for. I understand that. But when every single freaking corporation in this freaking place of a world we call Earth is pinching for everything we got, we don't, we won't, we're not going to have anything for any of them. Right. So then it comes, so like, so this is, for instance, my dilemma is Steam sale is here. I don't even play most of the games on Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Do I just buy the ones that I actually play? Yeah, because why that's not? Gonna be, that's going to be cheaper because now it's going to be $20 a month. Mm-hmm. In three months, that's $60. I can just buy Manor Lords for $25 right now. And I just own it, and I don't ever have to worry about anything else again, right? Yeah. Um, and then some of these other games that I might want to play when they come out, let's say I don't want to pay for Avowed. Okay, then maybe I just do the Ultimate for two or three months because that's going to end up being sixty dollars, or probably end up being cheaper than ten dollars cheaper than if me buying a vowed brand new, and I've got three months to beat the game. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, is it's going to be from like because for the longest it's been I've got X- Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, I got it, I don't worry about it. It's a monthly thing. It's not too invasive in regards to pricing. I can stomach it because I play so many games. But now it's like, man, you know, like you're going to raise it again. And I feel like I've, it almost feels like the Netflix thing, where Netflix like raises the price right they after raise they like raise the price. Like three times last year, yeah, yeah, it was insane. So how do I know that you're not going to come back six, eight months from now and raise it another two, three dollars? And then, and then, and then we're going to have to hear about Xbox Game Pass is starting to fail. Was it a good idea after all? And it's like, yeah, it was. And see, they got unreasonable. And he yeah. starts Game Pass juice out is of an amazing idea, but yeah. once you start overpaying for it it's not because you make up this great point i'd rather just buy the two or three games that i play and call it a day yeah let me just pay the 60 to 70 dollars now and own these three games that i play the uh, that i play rather than pay this 20 dollars a month in perpetuity if i if if like a game like man lords if a game like man lords if i plan if that's a game i plan on putting hundreds of hours into how many months am i going to have to pay for it to put those hundreds of hours into it exactly I'm better off just buying the game outright you know mm-hmm. yeah well that's my final thought xbox you're screwing up I was rooting for you super hard man i've been rooting for you brother and and uh you know as michael said to fredo you're breaking my heart you know, what I'm saying? I don't know what you're doing. I uh, bef- before we do the outro, I, I I went on Pokemon Go to look it up. So the Pokemon is ne- Necrozma, I think is its name, and okay. it confused with Solgaleo or Lunala. I don't know. So, so I so understand. There's, there's yeah. So one confused with two other ones to make whatever, and yeah, I'm. So I'm surprised. So though I understand that you're naming Pokemon, it sounds like you're just naming 15th century Italian philosophers. That's it, it, that's what it sounds like. Maybe that's where they got their names from. Maybe. Maybe they did a little teenage mutant ninja turtle thing with it. Huh? Where, where's the 21st century philosophers, man? Um our 21st century philosophers, they are Jordan Peterson. They are uh Lex Friedman, they are Joe Rogan. They Where's are the cool names. Oh well, I mean, you know, find some Italian ones then. Yeah, I guess so. And we got we got any people that li- that listen to us in Italy? You send us over some Italian philosophers, 21st century. Get some cool names though. Heck yeah. Well, that puts a button on level 110 the thoughts and players podcast if you like what you heard 
there. Uh, you can follow us on the socials. We're on Facebook and Twitter and TikTok and Instagram, all those places. Um, we are also, well, if if you, yeah, we're also on YouTube where we upload video versions of the podcast. Uh, if you want to support us, there's a couple ways you can do that. Uh, one, buy the merch. I've shown it before. I'll show it again. Hopefully I don't drop everything on my desk right here trying to grab this. We have a Teespring store, but you can grab different things like uh, like phone cases, T-shirts, hats, water jugs. Do I have my water jug here? I also have my water jug here. Look at me, ready to promote. Ready to look at that. What up? Look at that. Okay, so you can check that out there. Also, we have a Patreon. Three tiers for that Patreon: a two, a five, and a seven dollar tier. You can check that out if you want to support. Uh, we'll offer different goodies and exclusive content on there before it hits. Either YouTube and stuff, stuff just stays there uh, as exclusive content. So be sure to check that out. Uh, that is it for me. David, was there anything else you wanted to add? Peace. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next level. <laughs>